You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us this Friday evening. I'm Ken Bufa. An execution style murder on the LIRR was caught on camera. And now Yonkers man is accused of pulling the trigger. Our Cecilia Dowd has the details. A deadly shooting on an LIRR train last year in Ronkonkoma caught on camera. Nicholas D'Agostino is accused of shooting his friend Yusef Stain twice, then running off. District Attorney Ray Tierney. The victim Stain used the bathroom. Uh, D'Agostino uh, remained outside. When uh, Stain got out of the bathroom, uh, D'Agostino went up behind him uh, and out of his uh, pocket with his left hand, he fired a gun directly into the back of his head, an ex execution style um, murder. Prosecutor said the 20 year old defendant had come from Arizona to visit Stain. They went to the city and on the way home missed their stop in Wyandanche and boarded a westbound train in Ronkonkoma. That's where the killing happens. Uh, right now we're, 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 not, we're unsure of the motive. Moments before the shooting, you can see the victim handing over something. The DA said it's believed to be a bag of chips. D'Agostino pleaded not guilty at his arraignment. He is being held without bail. He absolutely maintains his innocence. He's had nothing to do with this crime. Stain's loved ones didn't talk to reporters, but one person said... Justice. After the shooting, prosecutors said D'Agostino took a bus back to Arizona. Authorities said he was arrested this week in Yonkers. He'd been staying there with his mom. The DA said this investigation included reviewing hundreds of hours of surveillance video. Other than the, the murder itself, this was a completely, uh, you know, all of the, the video showed a, a completely unremarkable interaction between the victim uh, and, and the defendant in this case. Certainly nothing that would, would uh, you know, portend uh, such a violent end. Cecilia Dowd for Newsday TV. Brown, a Long Island High School sports legend, NFL great actor and activist, has died. Brown first demonstrated his athletic prowess at Manhasset High School where he won 13 varsity letters in football, lacrosse, basketball, baseball, and track. The Hall of Fame running back for the Cleveland Browns retired at the peak of his career to become an actor and a prominent civil rights advocate during the 1960s. A spokesman for Brown's family says he passed away peacefully in his Los Angeles home last night with his wife by his side. He was 87 years old. The Suffolk Police Department is making sure the community remembers the 27 officers who have died on the job. And it's important that in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years from now, people walk past this memorial. They know your loved ones' names, the sacrifice they've done for this county. The department hosted its annual memorial ceremony at police headquarters this morning. The state is hoping to make traveling around the island a little easier this summer. Road construction is being paused at several summer hotspots, including the Ocean Parkway Traffic Circle, the Shelter Island Ferry Plaza in North Haven, and the Loop and Meadowbrook Parkway draw bridges. The pause comes just ahead of Memorial Day weekend. And the LIRR is helping you get around the East End this summer. The Enhanced Summer Friday South Fork Commuter Connection is back on track. Two eastbound trains or buses will depart from Spionk and Hampton Bays on Friday mornings with some stops in Montauk. Westbound trains will leave from Amagansett. And happening Monday, the effort to build a $4 billion casino project in Uniondale could take a big step forward. It's a story you'll see only in Newsday. Nassau lawmakers are expected to vote on granting Las Vegas Sands a 99-year lease. As Newsday has reported, Sand wants to build a casino with hotel rooms and a live entertainment venue on the county-owned Coliseum property. Now, if approved, the project still needs to clear several other hurdles, including an environmental review, and it has to win a highly competitive state gaming license. And an East End Beach is been named the best in the country. Well, one of the best, that is. Dr. Beach has released his annual list of the 10 best stretches of sand in the nation. And Cooper's Beach in Southampton now claimed the number three spot. The ranking is based on several factors, including sand type and waves. All right, speaking if you can get to the beach, let's take a look at your Long Island weather. Looks like some showers late tonight with temps in the mid 50s and tomorrow. Rain on the way. So let's take a closer look at tomorrow. Looks like rain and rain and more rain for the Saturday with temps in the 60s.
Watch News Day TV on the big screen. Use the remote to activate Siri, Alexa, Roku, or the Google Assistant on your streaming device. Say, install Newsday. Newsday TV, covering Long Island like no one else can. Newsday Sports is brought to you by PC Richard & Son. It's an East End institution, and today I'm taking you on one of the oldest race car tracks in the nation. It's a story you'll see only in Newsday. It's only a quarter mile around, but this tiny track is the center of the universe for Long Island auto racing. Number zero two. Built in 1949, Riverhead Raceway is one of the oldest NASCAR tracks in the nation. It's been letting fans get up close and personal with the drivers, the cars, and all the action for more than 70 years. It gives these people, you know, the opportunity to come have fun. Um, and it's just a great time to come here. Riverhead has been the only game in town since the 80s, when ISIP Speedway and Freeport Stadium Speedway shut down. Retiring announcer Bob Finan explains why the track is so popular. When they're at Riverhead Raceway, they're not going to see this anywhere else. Well, you can't see it on TV. You have to be there to experience the sights, the sounds. Now fans tell me that this raceway has given them decades of excitement, and they're excited for all the years still to come. I hope it stays forever. For many who show up every Saturday night, it's a family affair. Meredith Halpin's husband is a track announcer, but that's not all. Both my brothers race, and my nephew, and my niece, and me, and my son. He races uh, Vandaleros. Um, so they have grown up here. So uh, our entire life is here. The racing community is hoping the raceway will be around so that the kids who are growing up at the track now can someday bring their children to the quarter mile oval that stretches generations. And it's the only racetrack that we have. Now, due to the weather tomorrow, the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour event is postponed until Sunday, but I will tell you that place is an experience. Now, for more on Riverhead Raceway, go to Newsday.com and click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Feed Me is brought to you by PC Richard & Son. From a classic stack to pistachio to pineapple upside down, Elisa DiStefano teams up with Newsday's food writer Maria Elena Martinez to find the best pancakes on Long Island in today's Feed Me TV. <laughs> on for the best pancakes on Long Island and that brought us here to Hatch in Huntington. Home of one of Newsday food writer Maria Elena Martinez's top pancake picks. It seems simple but not all pancakes are created equal. Not all pancakes are created equal by any stretch of the imagination. My favorite luckily are a classic pancake which is a buttermilk pancake. They're fluffy, they're big and when you cut into them their stack, classic stack, is fantastic. This okay. butter is with cinnamon, so you mm. get that little cinnamony taste to it. And then obviously, real maple syrup. I drizzle a little bit of cinnamon. Back to the hit. Melts in your mouth. Ooh, thank oh you. My gosh. If you are not a traditionalist, it's the pineapple upside down pancakes. I'll give it a try. I'm now so, a fan of pineapple. Oh. That, that is good stuff. Okay, so if you like mm. these kind of pancakes, you've got to go to Maureen's Kitchen in Smithtown. This is a primer for that. All right, I better put down the fork if I'm going to keep eating. <laughs> Me too. Woo. Good thing I left some room because at Maureen's Kitchen, there are plenty of supersized pancakes to choose from. On their menu, they offer 10 different types of pancakes. Marie told me to try the pistachio. Oh my goodness. Okay, so these are the pistachio blueberry white chocolate chip for you. Wow, that is some stack. We also want to do to try the lemon poppy ragazza pancakes. Whoa. And our orange raspberry white chocolate chip roll up. Do I put syrup on this? 
Maybe not. My first pistachio pancake, white chocolate chips, blueberries, pistachio nuts. Mm. I love the crunch of the nuts. Marie, good choice. Their griddle is going all day, serving snacks for breakfast, brunch, and lunch. Just be sure to bring cash and your appetite. I am so stuffed, but I have to try their stuffed pancake. Mm. The raspberry, it tastes like dessert. For News ATV, Elisa DiStefano. Tough assignment today. All right, I'm getting plain pancakes. We got syrup on there, butter, and a pinch of sea salt. It'll change your life. Now, for more on where to find the best pancakes, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Get more of the stories you've seen on Newsday TV at Newsday.com. Plus breaking news, investigations, things to do, restaurants, and other Long Island news you can't get anywhere else. At Newsday.com, covering Long Island like no one else can. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thanks for spending part of your day with us. We'll leave you now with a look at your seven-day forecast.